Hey. hey. Okay. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, so yeah, this is my first tint on uh, uh, this particular platform. So, and uh, yeah, definitely we had some conversations. So thanks <laughs> in the morning here. So that's great. Uh, so I guess we are live here. Just want to confirm if people can see here. Yeah, let me check on your LinkedIn. I think we are live. Okay. Perfect. Yep, you're good. Yep. Okay, so hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, a special session. And uh, first of all, thanks, Brendan, for just check. I, I reached out this morning, and, and, and thank you so much for kind of making this time and quickly response for this session. Uh, so uh, this session is specifically uh, around what kind of uh, situations we are seeing at this point, right? The economic uh, conditions. Uh, there are a lot of people who are laid off. And I was thinking how, from my perspective, I can assist them. And then I thought about you. Uh, we already have uh, some conversations uh, over a Let's Talk podcast. Uh, if someone would like to look into the full conversation around uh, communication and speaking skills. So today's uh, discussion, which is short, like 15, 20 minutes discussion, is about how exactly the people who are facing uh, these situations at this point, all of a sudden, because uh, I'm sure that a lot of people have not an anticipated this. So what are the key things specifically uh, in terms of communication, uh, speaking skills, reaching out to the people, anything you would like to kind of uh, discuss with us so that they can get benefit and try to start working towards that? Absolutely, Saurabh. It's always great to be here and always, always great to serve and, and help people. And I always love your heart. So, so thanks for leading such a powerful movement. So here's, here's what I think. Now it's time where reality hits the fan, right? Now the recession's here. We've had a great bull market for the next, last, what, 12 years. And, and now it's time to, to live with the idea that there's going to be a lot of layoffs. And, you know, Meta's already laid off like 11,000 people. So, so things are really starting. So I, I think the first piece that I would recommend people is be the most prepared candidate in the room. Second place doesn't cut it anymore. So you really need to put in the time to make sure that when you're applying for jobs and you want to apply for a lot of them, so you max out your opportunities, that every time you go into an interview, it is obvious that you're the number one candidate. So now the question, Sarab, becomes, how can we work on our communication in a way that helps prepare for those job interviews and those opportunities? And I'll give you a couple. Let me start with one so you can jump in with it. Mm -hmm. So the first one is called question drills. We get asked questions all the time in our life, Sura. But a lot of us are reactive to those questions. So what I want you to do instead is I want you to make a list of all of the interview questions that you feel somebody will ask you. And I want you to answer one every single day. And then I want you to practice with other people who have also lost their jobs, other people who are in the same situation as you, and create a support group where all of you are practicing interviews with each other. So some people sort of might look at this and think, oh, but you're helping your competition. Not at all. Because if you're helping two other people and you're getting better together as a team and two of those people get jobs, they're also going to refer you into their companies. So start thinking about that. And that would be the first tip I would give for people. That's great. Uh, so, yeah, as you mentioned that the first is uh, try to create a support group and uh, exchange uh, your ideas as well. Uh, now, while they try to create these support groups, what are the things which they should be uh, very focused on? Like at this point, a lot of people are so much indulged in their day-to-day -day meetings or something, and all of a sudden they have to reach out and, and uh, prepare for the interview. So in those scenarios, uh, they haven't maybe fine-tuned their communication skills. And that being said, uh, I would like to let everyone know that uh, Brandon is... Uh, running, I think, a free call, if I'm not wrong, every day on uh, your website, if you can help us to make sure that people remember. What's the website name here again? Yeah, for sure, Saurav. So I do yes. like a, a free training every two weeks. Uh -huh. I did one this morning, actually, like 25 people showed up. And I just coached them through a couple of ideas to help them prepare for the recession for communication. And the next one's going to be on December 2nd. So you can mm -hmm. go to rockstarcommunicator.com and register. And it's absolutely free to join. That's great. 
So uh, coming back to what you mentioned that uh, try to create a, a group and start exchanging ideas or maybe try to have those virtual calls and understand like uh, where they are. Now, you mentioned a pretty good thing about like, don't treat them as competition. Uh, would you like to expand this? Because this is something where most of the people struggle. Like, okay, uh, I have four more people who are there and maybe uh, now I'm increasing my competition here. Uh, what is a different uh, perspective or mindset people should have, uh, as you said, a better together? For sure, Sarab. And I'll give you an example, a personal story. But when I was applying for jobs a long time ago, when I was an employee, I wanted to work in consulting, you know, IBM, McKinsey, Bain, that was my goal. So what did I do? I actually partnered with two or three other people who wanted the same job as me in the same city as me. So that sounds crazy. It's like, yeah. why would you work with other people? And the reason is very simple, because us three together mm -hmm. beat any other individual candidate who's working alone in a silo. And it's more energizing. So let's say John and Lila and Julia are the two people I'm working with. So me, John, and Julia, um, we're looking through all of our cover letters. We're giving each other feedback. We're staying up late at night with pizza and giving each other interviews. So it, it also makes us happier. Whereas the person who's alone, Surab, they're not going to be able to sustain that practice. They're going to get tired after a few hours and go, I'm done with the day. Whereas when you're in a team, you can keep going and motivating each other. And then what happens? Let's say John and Julia get a job and I don't. So that sounds like a bad outcome, right? But it actually isn't. Because who is the first person that John or Julie will refer when an opportunity comes up? Are they going to refer some random person on the street? Or are they going to refer me, the person who stayed up all night working on their cover letters, helping them? Not only will they uh, talk, talk to the company about me, they'll sell me. They'll say, you need to hire this guy. He's so good. He stayed up all night. He really helped you with my job interview. And that's the perspective most people don't understand, Saurabh, is when you work as a team, you actually all get jobs. And that's what happened with my circle. All of us got jobs in investment banking and private equity and consulting in my case, because we all work together and we beat every other candidate in the market. So that's what I encourage you to do as well. That's that's a wonderful perspective. I mean, there's always a win-win situation here that even, obviously, there's always a possibility that not everyone get get that particular job if it happens to apply like at the same time. So that is also one layer, right? You apply, then it's not possible that everyone also get interviewed at the same time. But the learning is something which you cannot uh, get away from that because once you have that camaraderie, once you have that relationship built, it always go a, a long way. And that's why what we are doing at this point is trying our best in our way to uh, make people think. And this is something which I really believe in that uh, which I have said previous time as well is the thinking man is a changing man. Mm -hmm. So you have to start working on whatever the uh, blind spot, the gaps which you have, which includes your communication skills as well. And I, I love uh, what you do in, in different platforms about uh, small things, small gestures. And yesterday itself, uh, I mentioned that try to be innovative, uh, maybe create a 30 second video and post it over there about your skill set, about what you're looking for, where you're located, because you never know about a sea of information. Uh, one just stop by and see your video your small message and okay this guy or girl uh, seems uh, something which i mean just try to uh, fill in our uh, requirements and they can reach out so it's always like my coaches mentioned that you just have to spread your net as as broad as possible just broadcast what you're looking for and definitely uh, by human nature default people would like to assist you so that is so important to uh, reach out from that perspective. Now, regarding the skills, uh, obviously different people have different skills. How exactly they develop certain skills, which they say that, okay, now this is my time to develop. As you said, that some people may have a negative thought. Some people may have positive. And I was reading one article on LinkedIn itself that uh, that person mentioned that this is my time to upskill myself, to learn, to uh, read a lot of books, to kind of uh, 
those things which never happened because I was always, uh, I would say, busy in delivering, but never upskilling myself. So what's your perspective about that part? I love that, Sarab, and I completely agree. I think I think growth is a mindset at the end of the day. Some people get fired and they go, yeah, my life is over. Other people have the same outcome and go, how can I leverage this? How can I use this extra time to make myself better? And I think now is the best time ever to work on your skill set because now you have that extra time. You have that opportunity to really showcase. One also piece that I'd love to, to point out, which I think is great news, is that you are not competing against the best candidates in the market because the best candidates in the market have a job. Right, they're already working, right? And they're just focused on their job, which means if you apply a lot of the tips that means Rob are talking about today, like the video outreaches, like creating that support system to practice interview questions, and another one that I'll throw in called the random word exercise, where you take a random word like juice box and computer screen. These are random presentations, but they make you more comfortable with uncertainty when you get into those job interviews. You could deal with anything. There's no candidate who's doing that right now. So if you're the person who's actually putting in the time, you're going to beat all the other candidates because you just put in more effort than everyone else. And I think it's very possible to be successful. You just got to put in a little bit more. And there's a quote that people can write down as well, Saurabh. If you communicate 20% better than your competition, you will stand out 100% of the time. So it's not about doing it a million different things. It's about doing the three things that nobody else is doing consistently enough. If you're applying for 10 jobs like a month, yeah, sure, you might get a job. But if you're applying for 10 jobs a week, like I'd be very surprised if out of those 500 applications in the next year, you don't land something. I'd be shocked. Yes, uh, I totally agree with that. And, and And you mentioned like you have to be consistent and – there are a lot of people who just apply a couple of jobs and uh, if they do not get the expected outcome, they will be like, I think I'm not good enough. Instead of that, you just have to persistent. I mean, there are a lot of instances, I think in your case as well, in my case, I have a lot of uh, examples wherein I have to reach out 100, 200 people. You just need one person, just one person to get through. That's it. I mean, you don't need 200 jobs. You just need one job. <laughs> so one. you really have to kind of reach out to as many people as possible. You're absolutely right. I mean, I'll tell you the best example with me when I was when I was applying for consulting jobs. I applied for all the consulting firms except maybe Capgemini. So I applied for Oliver Wyman, McKinsey, Bain, BCG, Accenture, Deloitte, like every single one of those firms. <laughs> Yeah. I got three interviews out of all of those 15 firms. So even if I, and I was getting coffees with all of them, mm -hmm. all the firms, I was meeting people at McKinsey. I didn't get an interview there. So I got an interview at Roland Berger, which is a French consulting firm, Accenture and IBM. And I got one offer from IBM. So if I didn't get that one offer, I wouldn't have worked in consulting. I would have went back to accounting. So that's the point that I want to drive exactly to your point, Saurav. You need to be willing to cast your net because you don't necessarily know who's going to see the value in you. So like Accenture and Roland, they told me like, ah, I don't think you're that great. And IBM said, you really need to work with us. Like, what do we need to do to give you a job? You can't control that. I couldn't guess it was going to be IBM. But externally, to your point, to the world, people are like, wow, this guy works at IBM. He's like the best. But it's like everyone else rejected me. Right. So that's the point I want to drive is to your point, you need to apply a lot and you only need one to win. That's great. So let's uh, go towards the end of our uh, conversation as a parting thought. What are your last comments on on people uh, who are looking at this uh, point, the jobs, just a parting thoughts? Yeah, here's my parting thought. And I'm not sure if you're going to like it, Sarah, but I think my parting <laughs> thought is it's only going to get worse from here. So if you're listening to this, I don't want mm -hmm. you to sit on the sidelines. I want you to take action. Watch all of Sarab's lives. Take the initiative. Come to the free training. Watch the videos. Get the head start quickly because now everybody right now is like dazed. Like, oh my God, I just lost my job. And they're going to be like that for another month before they start looking again. But if you take this 30-day head start right now, you, go, you can get a job in the next two weeks while everyone else is like confused and dazed. So I, I really think that uh, the... The, the reward will win, will be the fastest. The per, this is what Sequoia calls the survival of the quickest. So I would say, just be quick. Don't, don't wait, build a support group today. 
don't wait for Brenda to call you and and Sarab to call you. Hey, did you make the support group yet? No, like start tomorrow and start doing all these drills and start applying for jobs so you get the head start. That's great. So build your support system, build your network, cast your net as much as possible, upskill yourself, and please, please don't wait for those days to come because as you mentioned, you never know about the future and the things may get worse as well. So that's being said, uh, Brandon, uh, Brandon, sorry, uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for, uh, for your insights here. And I'm sure uh, people get value out of it. And yeah, talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, Srab. Thanks for yeah. having me. Bye-bye.